Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome. I do apologize for the delay, but it seems like every morning I have issues. I don't know why. But uh, I do have a PowerPoint. You can look at the PowerPoint later. Uh, since I don't have a, since my projector is not working for the uh, for the classroom, uh, I know that there are uh, those of you who are out in the audience. You probably already have a copy of the the PowerPoint slide. So we will we will kind of follow that outline uh, slightly. And then we will uh, we will adjust ourselves accordingly. Again, we are we are in Hebrews chapter twelve, and we are in the sixth verse. Uh, we will start with that second half. But as uh, but is as uh, but is it but as it is our custom. Uh, and before I get started, I do want to uh, again encourage the the review team to uh, if you all could start that process back uh, so we can get class participation and uh, by the way this is not just restricted to or limited to the classroom students uh, but most certainly it can be done by those who are out in zoom world as well so again uh, please uh, think about that I think that uh, this was being coordinated by uh, I believe sister Stella and minister I, I don't know who it is now but uh, whoever they you, you guys know who you are so you can let me know who will be doing what and let Minister Burnett know who will be doing what. And then we can start from there. All right, so let's go into the lesson now. So we are in verse six and as I was telling, uh, as I was telling Minister Burnett, uh, this lesson makes you ask some serious questions about, <laughs> <laughs> about who you are. And I, I was, uh, my, my question to Minister Burnett this morning was, uh, I wonder if I'm a bastard because <laughs> Because I'm looking around and I'm seeing uh, uh, a lot of my brothers and sisters going through a whole lot. Uh, not that I'm not going through things, mind you, but uh, in comparison to uh, what I'm looking at, uh, in comparison to what some of my other brothers and sisters are going through, uh, it makes me uh, kind of wonder, or not wonder, but it makes you, I, I suppose the word is, uh, jealous, I suppose. But at the same time, uh, you don't want to go through. <laughs> Again, not that I want to, <laughs> but uh, most certainly this lesson, uh, this lesson actually points that out. So again, uh, just uh, by way of a review, uh, I do want to do one thing before I go into the review, and that is a little house cleaning. And what I mean by that is, I want to just go back again uh, so we can look at this word chastisement uh, I don't recall whether I gave you the definition or not, but uh, this word that's used for chastisement here uh, is not the word that we would associate uh, with the idea of punishment. Uh, so therefore, this word literally means uh, to discipline. It, it, it means to correct. It's, as a matter of fact, uh, it's, it's used, it's the same word uh, that's used uh, when we talk about training up a child and what have you. Uh, it, it is that word that's used, uh, that's being used by the Hebrew writer, and of course you can understand why he's speaking to Jews who would, uh, who would be very familiar now uh, with how this term is used. Uh, that's why he uh, opens up with the, with the passage out of, uh, out of Proverbs. And uh, uh, on last week, uh, we emphasized the fact that that uh, this idea about chastisement, as it relates to uh, as it relates to uh, the people of God, is not a foreign. It is not a, a foreign concept, and I gave you some uh, passages of scriptures uh, for, as a matter of fact, uh, where this same uh, idea or same uh, principle is set forth. I'm not going to read them, but I'm going to I'm going to give them out to you. Uh, that's Job five seventeen, and uh, Psalms ninety four twelve, and obviously Proverbs. 312, and then uh, lastly, Revelation chapter 3, 19. verse 19. And of course, obviously, we have the one here in uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse uh, verse 6. So again, you can see now that what? That, that this principle or idea of God's chastising, I didn't use the word idea because it seemed like it's something, something mm -hmm. abstract or whatever. Uh, but the, uh, so I prefer to use the word uh, this principle whereby God uh, chastised uh, those whom He loved. Now, and again, remember now, we're not the, the Bible is not saying now 
that there are some Christians who God loves, and then there are other Christians that God don't love. The Bible is not saying that. What the Bible is, is emphasizing to us is what? Is that God chastises his people as a means of, correct, of, of correction and is designed to do what? To grow our faith, to grow our relationship uh, with him. Uh, again, not, yes, ma'am. Well, one of the other things that we have to think about, and then I did read it, but it, it makes so much sense, is that even though we are Christians and we are saved, we still have to pay for our sins. So what we do is when we sin, yeah, I mean, when I say pay for them, you have to, you have to God is going to check Consequences. Our sins. Consequences. Consequences. Yeah. Consequences to this right. Thing. So we get spanked yeah. for, being transgr for being transgressive. Right. So, and it depends on what I do and how much I do. I'm going to just say that he, whether he's going to chastise me or when he chastises me. Right. It, okay. go, it goes back to the four things that you gave us last week where it says God acts as our father. Yes. As a natural loving father yes. to uh, chastise his child. Mm -hmm. You got four children. One may need a little more chastisement uh, or training or instruction or discipline. Then the other yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. yeah, women need more to ride. <laughs> right. <laughs> the other two. Okay. Right. Some just need talking to. Right. Right. And, right. They, and that can correct it. Yeah, but they, they will more. respond. That's right. Okay, so that's all I'm saying is this, that's how God, and you feel like you, uh, I'm, a, I'm a stepchild or something like that. No, you're not, but you're not, you know, transgressing yeah. like Marcus over here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, not, you're not like me. I, I, I had to be told. Four or five <laughs> times, he can tell you once and you get it. <laughs> okay, that's all I'm saying. Okay, so and and uh, and, and 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 that's a very good point. And also, we pointed out on last week, as Minister Burnett brought up, is that there are four things that we can see here uh, in this particular verse. And the first one that I, I found was very, and, and these, by the way, uh, 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 Dr. John Owens brings these points out. And the first one that he said. Uh, was uh, although it, it, it seems kind of obvious, it doesn't really jump out at you. And that, of course, is is that the best, and I think that you was kind of alluded to this, uh, Sister Stella, uh, the best of God's children. In other words, it, it doesn't matter how good you are. All of God's children needs to be chastised. In other words, all of us who are in the family needs chastisement by God. Why? Because God wants to make us uh, let me rephrase that. Because God wants to get us, our relationship, closer and closer to him so that we can get to know uh, who he is. And remember what I said on last week. We, uh, in, in, in order to really make this lesson uh, uh, apply to us, uh, I, I told you that we're going to use Job now uh, as our little uh, uh, object lesson or as our, as our example uh, or, a, a, or, or a personification of, of how we are to view chastisement. Because again, in the very first chapter of Job, it is God who says that he is, that, that there is none like, there is none more righteous than Job. Mm -hmm. So again, now you can see now that, 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 that there will be no reason in our mind <laughs> why God would have to uh, chastise uh, a saint like Job. So again, the first thing that we see in this, uh, uh, in this six verses is that it shows us uh, that the best of God's children needs chastisement. And of course, we have James chapter three, uh, verse two as a reference there as well. And then the second thing that we see in this particular passage or in this particular verse, I should say, is that God will cor correct all whom he adopts uh, into his family. Now, here's the other important thing. In other words, if you're in God's family, follow me now, he will what? He will chastise you. Mm -hmm. And as Sister Stella was pointing out, when we talk about chastisement, uh, we must chastisement. Chastisement. Uh, we must see it from these two particular views, and that, of course, it is um, is um, is. I'm going to use this word punishment, but it's it's not really a good word, and I'm going to explain why. And then, of course, I want to put over here uh, correction. Okay. So, again, and, and, and I want to take this, this word punishment out because it's not, 
is not a proper word. And let me explain to you why it's not a proper word. All of our punishment that we have, uh, that we have, quote unquote, coming and deserving of us has already been born upon that cross. So therefore, those uh, the punishment for our sins have been have been uh, uh, born by Jesus Christ Himself. So what happens here is is that God will what He will discipline us, and we can put here uh, when we sin, God will in essence what He will discipline us. And then of course we have here the correction now, and this is what Hebrews chapter twelve verse six has in view. In other words. Uh, it has the idea about correction, and let's put another word here, the idea about training, okay? Again, uh, and all these are designed to do what? They are designed to, uh, to draw us closer to God by putting us in positions where we would normally not be in. Again, let's go back to our object lesson, Job. Job was the most righteous man at that time, but God wanted to do what? He wanted to bring him up higher. So therefore, how is he going to do that? Well, he's going to have to, he's going to, have to do this. He's going to have to do some chastising. In other words, uh, training, as, training, if you want to call it that, or whatever, or whatever word you want to put there. But again, the, 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 design, the design is what? It's not that I'm going to punish you. It's not that I hate you, Joe. But I need to get you up from where you're at to a what? To a higher level. And of course, uh, we don't find that out again until uh, the last chapter of the book of Job, uh, where Job literally confesses that idea or the reality. As a matter of fact, let's go to the last chapter of Job real quickly. And what's the last thing in that box? Hebrew what? 12 6. Oh, okay. Hebrew 12 6. 12, okay. 12. Okay, Job chapter, and for sake of time, I'm going to just read it out of my Bible. Job chapter 42, notice what it says now, okay? Uh, and I'm going to jump down to, uh, to verse 3. This is Job now, uh, uh, in essence, repenting for, his, for all that he's been talking about started in, uh, in, in the earlier chapters. But in verse 3, he says, who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Here and I will speak, I will question you, and you make it known to me. I had heard, he knows what Job, knows what Job says in verse 5. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but look what he says now. But now my eyes see you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. So again, you can see now uh, that all those things that happened to Job, and we read those on last week, all those things happened to Job, and now Job finally understands what? This is why you were allowing those things uh, to take place for me. Uh, to take, uh, to, to, to uh, this is why you wanted, that's, this is why you allowed uh, those things to happen to me, was because you wanted to do what? You wanted to take me up. Uh, to a higher level of intimacy with uh, with his Lord. So you can see now uh, that that's the second thing that we find uh, 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 that we find in this particular verse. But also we find something else in this verse as well. Is that although God will chastise his child, he will leave the reprobate. In other words, he will leave the sinner mm -hmm. to their own vices. And, and of course, uh, if you look at Romans chapter 1 real quickly, uh, Romans chapter 1 verse 26 I'll go there real quickly to get, in, to get an understanding about what this means. Uh, in other words, uh, he will ignore the failings of his people to be suffered to go on un, uh, unrebuking wickedness in a sure sign uh, of alienation from God. In other words, uh, God will allow the sinner, the wicked person, to continue on in their sins. Uh, again, we said before again, why? Because what? Because they're not, they're not his children. Let me be careful here. They are not his children through regeneration. Because remember now, uh, everybody are children of God because God made everybody. So therefore, it is by uh, it is because of that fact, uh, all people, all humanity is, uh, will be categorized as children of God. But from a spiritual standpoint, only those of us who have been regenerated, born again, uh, are, are regarded, is, is, is who we're referring to 
uh, in this particular uh, passage of scripture. Now, I, like look, the, I like the way John MacArthur uh, kind of separates the two. Okay. Uh, he says on page 393, he says, all men are subject to God's punishment. Right. But only his children yes, yes. receive his discipline. Exactly right. And, and, and that's a very good point to, to, to realize. In other words, uh, this is the blessedness, if you will, right. of being a child of God, uh, that God will indeed chastise, uh, and he will, of course, uh, discipline those uh, who are his uh, children. So who has Romans 1.26, uh, where we see how God uh, responds to the, uh, to the we, we call it, uh, we, we use the word uh, reprobate, uh, but we know we're talking about those sinners uh, who just continue to sin and sin and sin, there are no boundaries, in other words. 126. Yes. For this cause, God gave them up unto foul affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Okay, so you can see now uh, that this, of course, is talking about uh, homosexuality, but you can see that this would apply to all those who are reprobates. In other words, all those who do those things uh, which, which Seem, which seems to have no boundaries uh, as far as their actions are, uh, are concerned. So uh, that's the second thing. And then, of course, there's a third thing that we found out uh, that we see in this particular verse. And that, of course, uh, is that uh, we see that, uh, that, all, that when God chastises us, all he's doing is what? All he's doing is acting uh, as any father would do. OK, in other words, uh, no wise or good parent, no wise or good father, no wise or good mother, if they're single, uh, none of them uh, will, will, would wink or, or turn a uh, or turn a eye backwards or whatever the case might be uh, at, a, at, at the, uh, uh, the wrongdoings of their child. Uh, if they do, and I understand that, that we understand that there are folks who do that, but we're not talking about, we're not talking about the bad parents, we're talking about the parents who are concerned about their children and about and who are concerned uh, about the nurture of their of their child. That's who it, that's who the writer has in view here, and that's where the and that's what we're uh, building that principle upon. Again, uh, the good parent is in view, and therefore, if the good parent would do this, how much more now <laughs> will God do this uh, to his uh, to his children, who he loved beyond boundaries? In other words, uh, there is no limits to God's love for his people. Uh, and, and, and in other words, uh, yes, we love our children, but uh, the, the love that we have for our children uh, cannot be compared to the love that God uh, has uh, for us. That's why in uh, 1 John chapter three, uh, the apostle John, uh, you know, he grasps for words and he's trying to uh, find words to express the love of God. And he just, as a matter of fact, i go there real quickly. First John chapter three, and, and notice how uh, the Apostle John, uh, notice how he tries to, <laughs> you know, as, as, as best as he humanly, uh, as best as humanly possible, uh, try to, uh, to, to, to verbalize the love of God. Look what he says in verse one. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. In other words, what kind of love is that? In other words, some of your translations I uh, use a uh, use a much stronger. Uh, it's it translated a little stronger. Uh, oh, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us oh, that we should be how great a love that oh, you know yeah. <laughs> that, that 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 we should be what that we should be called the children of God. So you can see now that 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 when we try to compare the love of God uh, that He has towards us, there is no comparison. There is no human comparison that we could find uh, in order to grasp the reality of how much love uh, God loves for us. And of course, uh, the fourth thing that we see in this particular verse is, is, that, is that God's disciplinary dealings uh, with his sons proceed from and make manifest his love to them, obviously. In other words, uh, because God disciplines us and because God uh, corrects us and because God does in a, in, in, in a uh, uh, in a way that we cannot understand is also at the same time training us on how we can be righteous uh, in his sight. Uh, we can see that uh, we can see that being being illustrated here as well. 
I don't, and, I don't know if I heard you say this, uh, the, the one that says, uh, God will correct all he adopts uh, into his family as well. Uh, I, 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 you, 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 I, I, I probably missed it, but it no. doesn't hurt to repeat it. Uh, yeah, it doesn't that, hurt to repeat it. Yeah. Especially, I mean, we, we hear, always hear the difference between, you know, the children of Israel right. and us outside the children right, right, of Israel. Right. Right. And being brought in. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. When, when we're adopted in, we're just we're just like them, yeah. treated just like exactly them, right. and for all practical purposes, are part of the family. Exactly right. And we're going to get disciplined as well. Okay. It's not like in the world today, you know, <laughs> some of these folks adopt children, yeah. uh, but they don't treat them like they're uh -huh. biological uh -huh. children. Exactly right. 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 And, and and that's a very good point, and, and we don't want and, and we don't want to ever forget that 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 we are the uh, we are the what and, and Romans chapter eleven Paul says that what that we are what we are the wild olive tree that has been grafted <laughs> into the pure olive tree. So wow. so 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 yes, uh, the the idea about adoption we must never forget that what that we were not uh, we were not what, what did Ephesians chapter two say that we were what we were not part of the covenant people. Right. Yeah. Without hope. <laughs> yeah, let, let's go there real quickly. Uh, real quickly, Ephesians. Yeah, but... Because the reason why this is so important is because most of the time we as Christians, we, we, we don't fully <laughs> uh, realize how special we are to God and all that God has done for those of us who were never part of the covenant people. And now we are. Look, look at Ephesians chapter 2. I think it starts... Uh, uh, 11. Someone read that. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2. Someone start reading that verse 11. Let's, let's move quickly. Move quickly. We are we're running out of time. Therefore, remember that previously you, the Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision, which is performed in the flesh by human hands, remember that you were at that time separate from Christ, excluded from the people of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of, promise, of the promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now. But now. <laughs> but now. <laughs> we like the but now part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who previously were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So, so, so again, you, you can see that, right? In, in, in your mind's eye, you can see that. You know, we're way over here. And God's people, his chosen people are way over there. And you got a big wall now that separates the two. By the way, no one can what? It's, I think that goes back to what Stella was asking last week. You got these people on this side of the fence. Mm -hmm. You got the other. How do I get across? Paul says the wall of petition has been broken now. Uh, by the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So now we are what? Now we are one people, and now we can, of course, become part of the commonwealth, the family of that pure olive tree now. Uh, we can now become part uh, of that great, great uh, household, he calls it. I like the word household because uh, that, that does work for us. That reemphasizes the, uh, the idea of family, of father, child, uh, and what have you. So we can understand again uh, what, the writer, uh, what the writer has has to say about this idea uh, about uh, uh, about the love of God. But notice now uh, that because of the love of God, uh, we also notice now uh, that that I'm sorry, not just the love of God, but but we also know now that that because of the chastisement of God and, and based upon the chastisement, the chastisement of God, uh, we 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 not only know that it flows from God's love and not from His and and I think that we all. Uh, by now, uh, have have uh, as I said at the beginning of this particular session that I had. Uh, whenever I would teach this verse, I would teach it from the standpoint of uh, you know, here. And I must admit, I didn't have any idea about this side. That was, in other words, this side was totally foreign to my understanding uh -huh. about this word just uh, uh, and 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 you know, you know as you teach uh, and as you are. Required to study more, 
Uh, then of course you begin to have a you, you begin to to get a better understanding. In other words, you begin to get a uh, a as a matter of fact. Uh, uh, let me do one thing here. Uh, I want to well I can't do it now because I don't have it on my screen. But uh, if you have an opportunity and you go to the uh, Blue Letter Bible, uh, the Blue Letter Bible will actually. I uh, give you all the different ways that this word, this one English word, uh, is used in the new, not just the New Testament, but the Old Testament as well. And one of those words is is that it, uh, again pertaining to this side of the fence, so to speak. One of those words I uh, emphasize the fact that this kind of chastisement that, that the Hebrew writer is talking about is designed to, in essence, mold a person uh, into in, 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 into a better uh, person, or whatever the case might be. Uh, and of course, uh, we can see now uh, why that would be necessary. And, and again, let's go. Let's go back to our object lesson. If God would never have allowed Job to go through uh, all those things that he went through, how much further would he have moved from where he was? Say what? What? He, how could he? He was already what? Huh? Everything that he wanted or needed at that time. Well, but from a spiritual standpoint, it was considered uprightness and, and adjustment. It's, it's, right. So, so, so how? So, where else can I go now? Right. I'm already at the top. I, I'm exactly right. I'm, I'm the cream of the crop already. Mm -hmm. Okay. But God is looking down and says, "Well, you, you might. I know that you are because I have declared you to be so. But I want to take you higher. You haven't arrived yet. Exactly right. And in order for me to do that, Joe." I mean, you got you got houses, you got you got kids, you got you got a good family, you got a wife, you got all kind of livestock. You, you don't need anything more. It makes it it, it, <laughs> it really makes me think about sports, mm. okay, and how you may think you're the yes. greatest ball yes. player yes. in the world. Yes, but oh. then <laughs> your coach is going to be training you and discipline you. Because he sees your shortfalls mm -hmm. and wants to make you better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that training, that correction, that discipline comes into play. And I think that we get stagnant. Yes. Well, exactly right. Absolutely right. We, we feel we don't have to learn anything. Yes. Yeah. We don't need to know I'm anything. The, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the greatest of all time. What do <laughs> I need to learn? <laughs> Yeah, all, all you other people down there, you all can take a take an example from me because uh, now you, exactly right. Now remember now. Here is a question. See how much you remember. Who is it that does know that does not need this? That we've been that the writer has been focused upon. Who, who, who did he compare this? Uh, those uh, those on the, I got another side. Those not. Well, all of them got children, but the ones that don't. Okay. They don't believe. Don't believe. All right. They, they deserve punishment because they don't get the they discipline. Right. What, what, is, what does Hebrews 12 2 say? Go ahead. Talk about enduring the cross. We have two. Yeah. Looking only at Jesus. Uh, I'm sorry, verse th the beginning of verse three. Where two goes with three, but look at verse three. Yeah. Consider him, consider him that endures such contradictions of sinners against himself, lest he be rude and faint in your minds. Right. So, so when you put two and three together, all right, we all are, are, are in essence being what conformed to this to this one individual. Okay, who 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 has who has in essence reached the point that none of us will, will ever reach on this earth? But that's what that's the that's where we are. What that's what we are striving for, and therefore God is God now, being the Father, He's going to now what He's going to in essence He's going to in essence now chastise us. Because it's all for transformation. Exactly right. I am uh, I am a G D. We need to be what? As you just said, Mr. Burnett, what did you say? Transform. Yeah. Because okay. we're already trying to conform ourselves right. to this world. Exactly. 
but God is trying to transform us spiritually right. into the image of Christ. Exactly right. Because what is natural now for us to do what? To conform to the world. That's, that's natural for us. But God says, no, 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 no. I need you to what? To be what? To, to be transformed. And how are you going to do that? Well, I got to do this. Okay, because again, uh, we don't want to become, quote unquote, stagnated <laughs> and never move from one point to the other point. We want to what? We remember now, we don't, we, we're what now? We're, we're on a race. Uh -huh. you, it, when you're in a race, you, you, you don't go, you don't, you don't get in a race now not to win. You want to always be striving <laughs> to beat that. Well, and again, we're not, we're not trying to beat each other, but the, the point is what? The, the finish the race. Exactly right. So whether I finish first, second, third place, or if I get in last place, I want to what? I want to what? I want to finish the race. Okay? And God says what? This is gonna, this is gonna get you the way I need you to be. Okay, because God wants to what? We want to be what? Transformed into the image of our of uh, again of who? Verse 2 says, 12, 2 says what? Look into Christ, the founder, or the or, or the pioneer, the champion. Okay, we want to be just like our champion, and in order to do that, God says He's got to do some things because we don't have the ability to to do that. You know, Pastor Francis used to say he, he is trying to prepare you for the next level, but this really adds much more meat it does to that state it does. It does. okay it does. because i'm like okay he's trying to prepare me what else do i need to do where else do i need to go in order to be prepared okay right but, right right but i'm not i'm thinking of it from my perspective right. and not from god's right. perspective. right but and and here is and here is the key to what you just said as god works on us we will begin to think Yes. Just like God. In other words, now when 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 adversity comes at us, mm -hmm. yeah. now we can at least what recognize, mm -hmm. okay, that this is coming from my father, Amen. and, and, and well, exactly right. In, in other words, if, if I believe and know that I'm his child, I know he's not going to do anything that's going to that's going to literally hurt me. Mm -hmm. Although it may hurt me, because again, let's go back to our example. Job, I mean, Job lost everything. He lost his health. He lost, he lost his so-called friends or whatever. But, but he, he literally lost everything. Right. But yet God, what God restored those things back to him. And what's more important, and I think that Job uh, would, 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 would agree with us here, Job would, would say to us right now is that, yes, God gave me back everything. But you know what? The, but you know what's the, what was the most important thing he gave me? Was what? Was that closer relationship? That was more important than anything. Now my eyes. Now my eyes see. And I think that that we all are, are seeking for that to be drawn closer and closer to know God, not because of what my mother or father said or went through, but you, we need to know God uh, for ourselves. So again, uh, we can see all those things uh, as it relates to uh, what God is doing for us. Uh, in our life, and as you said before, uh, that the Christian chastisement, uh, it flows from God's love again, like, and again, I say before, and I'm not, uh, I'm not ashamed to always uh, uh, admit my mistakes, because uh, one thing that a, that a teacher must understand is what, you don't know everything, but when you make a mistake, it's critical that you come back and, and correct those mistakes, and when you, especially when it comes to a misunderstanding, if you will, of, of these biblical terms that we use in the word of God, again, based upon, okay, what we have either been taught ourselves or what we have, uh, or we, or what we have been studying uh, ourselves as well. So now we have a better, in other words, what do you have here is what? You have a balance now of this idea about chastisement. Because if, if, if you don't get this balance now, all you would know about God is what? He's always, all he does is just punish me, although I deserve it. And we would never understand this aspect because, again, 
whichever whichever side of the fence you are on, whichever side of the, the, the side of the board you're on, everything evolves around what? Around what? Around God's love. Uh, and I think when the, your, your diagram from last, last week says, in order for us to truly understand that, is the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. Right. Exactly right. Because apart from that, I mean, we'll, we'll never get this yeah. or be able to grasp this concept. As a matter of fact, uh, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. This again is, is, is my is my concern when I came this morning. All this is it does not this is not all about John, by the way, but it's I'm just telling you. Uh, as I study these things, it kind of, you, you know, the word kind of like, it works on you first so you can put it out <laughs> to other people. But uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says what? Read it somebody, anybody. It shows you how far, again, I'm talking about me. It shows me how far I need to go or how far I have to, uh, I have to go the, the, uh, or how far, how, how far short, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm falling from uh, the kind of person that uh, God needs me to be. Read that. First Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. See, the, the part that... Uh, the part that catches my eye is that part that says that God will not allow <clears throat> that God will not allow you to be tempted beyond your ability to what? Mm -hmm. To endure it. Uh -huh. okay. Now, what's the implication there? Do you suppose? Allow? Yeah, in other words, God will not allow uh, he's safeguarding you. He's safeguarding you, right? He right. loves his love. He right, loves. exactly right. But let, 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 me, let me put it another way. Mm -hmm. What's a negative implication in that particular? It, it, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be tempted. You're going to go through something. You're going to go through something. But uh, maybe uh, make him thinking it from a, Maybe yeah. I'm overthinking it. But what I see here is this. Is that the reason why God does not chastise many of us oh, is because we can't take it. We're not ready. And he say what? We're not, ready. we're not ready. That's the part that concerns me. The, the, in other words, why doesn't God allow more things to come at me? So you can grow more. Exactly, exactly right. And I can right. Grow more to understand exactly right. right. Well, he said, well, you, you won't be able, you can't take it. You're not able. And you're not able. Yeah. Right. So in other words, because I know your limitation, I'm only going to allow the small things first. Right. And now, 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 if you don't respond, mm -hmm. a loving father now, we're not uh, over, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, 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 over punish, no, no, not punish, <laughs> but he will not overburden you with stuff that he know you, you that you're not going to be able to carry. Yeah, so we're back at Galatians 6. That says what? About the, um, we should be more mature. We should be not on the milk anymore, but on meat. Well, well, yeah. I mean, that, that's the ultimate. That's the that's the ultimate point. Uh, it goes back to uh, what Minister Burnett was saying is that the 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 more of the word that gets in us, the more we should become more conformed. What's that word? Uh, transform into the image of Christ. That's why we must. That, that's why we want to. Uh, that's why we want to 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 grow in the Word. Because again, not that the and follow me now. Not that the Holy Spirit can't transform us uh, apart from us doing it, but that's how God has chosen for us to do that. In other words, God has chosen. The means by which we are to be sanctified, because that's what, that's what we're really talking about. In, in, in order to be uh, sanctified, God has chosen uh, the, the, the means to be his word and his spirit. And therefore, we are to, in essence, take in 
follow me now. We have to do what? We have to take in on the one hand and then submit ourselves on the other hand. Submit, in other words, take in the word, submit to the Holy Spirit, and now the marriage takes place. And from that marriage now comes what? And now comes the power now by which we can what? By which we can live a life uh, that will transform. Don't take it in. Difficult to submit. In other words, we cannot submit to something that if we don't know why or if there is no rational reason why. It is the word that the Holy Spirit used in order to do what? In order to grow us. Yeah. I think that in that 1013, in my translation, he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. Exactly. Right. right. Because if he takes us too far, we'll perceive it, could very easily perceive it wrong. Yep. Uh, we'll be it, on this side. Yeah. Negative. In other words, it'll be negative. It'll be negative. Instead right. of a positive. Right. As a matter of fact, let's be real with ourselves. Yeah. We never, <laughs> very seldom, I'm speaking John now, I can't speak to you, but very seldom do I see chastisement on this side. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm always over here. Uh, and again, mainly because I didn't understand it before. Right. But now. But now. See, now, everybody in this class now, and this is why we're taking so much time. Everybody in this class now should have a better understanding about this word when you hear it. Yes. Because yeah, normally, on this side, it's preparation. Exactly right. Okay. And that side is punishment. Punishment, right. Mm -hmm. And we're always associated with punishment, by the way. We forget now that 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 punishment has already been done. Okay, first John one one nine says what? What does what does one one John one nine say? If if yeah if 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 we'll go there. One nine is uh, the same thing too. No. Okay, one John one nine says let's 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 uh let's hurry. We, let's uh, stand. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay, so so again, uh, the, the 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 penalty has already been paid. Right. The the, the assurance, uh, our assurance is what our assurance is is that we rest upon that finished work, and therefore we do what now we confess, and God says that He's what that that because He's just. Okay. In other words. God is not going to do a double jeopardy here. He's not going to punish you now for the sins that Christ has already paid for. Okay. All right? So therefore, our role is what? To confess. God's role is what? To be a just judge and release you from that penalty. No, no, no not, not penalty, but, but, but release you from that, uh, from that sin. Because remember now, the, the whole, uh, the, the meaning behind and the idea behind the word forgiveness is to do what? To release. That's why the Lord says what? If you don't forgive your brother or your sister of their sins, in other words, if you don't release them from that guilt, then I'm not going to, again, now, again, he's not saying now that he's not going to forgive you, but what he's saying is, is that what? Is that we are to do what? We are to free each other. And we free each other by doing what? By forgiving that person of their sins. There's a damage that can take place by not doing so can spend, send that a person into a, a spiral. Exactly right. And they may yeah, despair, right. you know. Right. And they will what? They will remain on this side. And themselves more than what the person they try. Right. 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 Yeah. right. And, and it's more of a damage than a help. Right. Exactly they, right. They will right. not see themselves getting to the next level. Exactly. Because exactly. they're going to be wallowing. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So you can see now uh, that all those things are, are the result of God's love. And, 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 and let's be real here. When we think about God's love, uh, notice how we are to uh to to kind of like understand that uh, again uh, uh john owens tells us uh, that 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 the love of god uh it, it regular and, and i like what he says it regulates we all know what a regulator does right 
if if you got water and you, you know you can you could you could you could do what control it. control it in other words if you can get a, if you let a whole lot go out or uh, just a little bit drip 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 but it but but John Owen says that 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 the love of God regulates and notice what he says regulates all the ways of God in dealing with his people I, I like that that the love of that that it is the love of God which regulates not some ways not a couple of ways but all the way and, and, and that's why it's so important to, 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 to realize this side of the board is why it's because we understand that whatever is happening to us is being regulated by the love of God. And it only takes place, in other words, uh, let me rephrase it, God only deals that way with a specific kind of people and they are us. <laughs> in other words, no one in the entire world has that privilege whereby God's love is always positive directed at them. Never negative is my point. Even when we're over here, it's still positive. Why? Because it's designed now to do what? To correct us. Not the world. Yeah, he says, when, it, when the believer is smarting under the rod, let him not say, God is not is now punishing me for my sins. Exactly. That can never be. Never be. Never. That is most dishonoring of the blood of Christ. God is correcting you in love, not smiting you in wrath. Right, right. Again, these are all what? These are all blessings. <laughs> these, these are all things that, remember now who this writer is talking to. He's talking to people who need hope. And they need to know about this love that God has. Yes, you're going through some hard times now. But it's still a manifestation of the love of God. And, and notice now. Notice now some things about the love of God. It, it, it was love which elected us. In other words, never believe. <laughs> we call it, uh, Marcus, uh, Minister Burnett, uh, uh, we call it never believe in this idea about cheap grace. Grace is not cheap. No. Yes, it's free, <laughs> but it ain't cheap. It's only free because you and me and, and, every, and every other believer in the world we had to pay nothing. Amen. What freedom? It cost our Lord and Savior his very life. Everything. As a matter of fact, you could almost say it cost him everything because he gave up his earthly throne to come down and live in this old wretched world. And then in the note it says he died of going to Christ. I mean, he died, he died up on, he died up on the cross. Now, as a matter of fact, think about it from this standpoint again, from Dr. Owens. The think about this standpoint is that is that when you think about your election, follow me now. When you think about the fact that God elected John Cobb way back before there was a world, way before I was a a, 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 a speck of grain, or whatever you want to call it, when you can see. But, but way before then, God loved me. <laughs> that's how we are to, in essence, in other words, that's how we are to, uh, that's how we are to think about the love of God as it relates to why and how he elected us and when he elected us. Mm -hmm. I think it goes back to 1 John 3, when he says, how great a love. How great a love. The Father has given us. How great a love. How, how great a love. Uh, it's just a, no ordinary love. It's a, mm -hmm. This is a love beyond comparison. You can't, you can't thank you. I thought that though is, you know, you know I always kind of, I kind of have a problem with, with people going on saying that I'm blessed that I was born again. Because it's almost like the implication there is that you did something for God to choose you. Mm -hmm. You know, in my mind, you know, but the thing about that is, None of us know who God chose. Right, and 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 remember now, our will choose. Our will choose other than ourselves. Yeah. We we 
We right. know or, 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 or has chosen, really. That's right. Yeah. 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 We can't yeah. use it. In... It says, like, to make sure I let you show, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. That's yeah. What it says. and so, you know, because the reason why I don't like that saying is because, you know, we, you know, at least I speak for myself, tend to look at folks and say, well, it's because of the life that they're living, but they ain't chosen. Yeah, and, and, and remember now, uh, remember now that. Well, they ain't high with faith. Well, remember now that, that, and this is just, you know, a side line, right? uh, is that there was only one person right. that was highly favored by God, right. and that's Mary. No one else, now it's, this is important, no one else can say that. You can't say it, I can't say it, you can't, no. In other words, there is only one highly favored person that, that has ever been born, and that was Mary. Why? The angel tell you why. Because God has chosen you to bear his son. And because of that, you are what? You are highly favored, Mary. No one else, unless you can, unless you can make that claim, which I don't think anybody else can. So, so again, the idea is, is that when we think about our election, we must always think about it from the love of God, that it was purely and altogether based upon his love for folks who had not even been created yet, who are who deserve nothing from him, and yet he chose you. As a matter of fact, to your Bibles real quick to Ephesians 1, 4 and 5. And notice now that this is how we should think about uh, our election. Uh, in other words, uh, if, if all we can do is say to ourselves and be satisfied with the idea uh, that, you know, that I'm so happy that God chose me from the beginning or from the foundation of the world, if that's as far as you can go with your election, you have totally missed the point. Because what should, what should, what should, as a, as the old folks would say, what should really make you shout mm -hmm. is what you're going to read in these two verses. What does it say? Ephesians chapter one, verses four and five. What does it say? Just as he has chosen him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy. And without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So, so again, that's where we must that, that that's where we must stop it. We, we, we don't stop at the fact, in other words, we don't glory in the fact that that I was chosen before the foundation of the world. Important as that is, we have to always think about love the love of god that he that before that was a world he he chose me right. and then verse six says do you want to know why he chose you only one reason Be, because it, he took pleasure in it i mean that, that's what the that, that's what the that's what the phrase literally mean in the in, in the greek translation it simply pleased him to choose James Garrett, John Cobb. Mm -hmm. But do you, you know, I, 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 I was hearing that, but I'm also seeing the implication of chastisement in that fourth verse. Okay. Because he said that uh, we would be only at blank. Exactly. We would. We would. Yeah, we ain't there yet, but, but uh -huh. we would, and that's where that transformation exactly comes right. in. He's going to get us there, no doubt so, whatsoever. So, so, so you're saying that 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 what you have there is purpose. In other words, God said, "I'm not just picking out a bunch of people just yeah. just just because it's a good idea, but I got a plan for you." That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make you blame okay. this and fall this. Mm -hmm. Because what I want you to be what just like me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in order for that to happen, Joe, I gotta take you, I gotta take you to some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. In order for that to happen, Marcus, I gotta, I gotta, yeah, I know it's gonna be painful, but I gotta take you to some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> because see, I have a grand purpose yeah. bigger than you could ever imagine. 
way beyond you can even think about. I can't even tell you. I, I can't even tell you about it right now because you can't fathom what right. I've got planned for you. Exactly right. So just trust. Me. Yeah, right. Uh, and just be assured, Stella Jones, that it's going to take place. That's right. That's right. Uh, Philippians 1 6. When he I, began, he's he, he, he going to complete it. Yeah, he's he, he, he <laughs> going to complete it. He has to complete it. Yeah. But then again, as we get ready to close, notice again what are these things about God's love. It's what? It is what? It is God's love that redeemed us. Now remember now that redemption requires somebody somewhere to pay something. And you got to have whatever the price is, you got to, two things are required, right? You gotta first of all have you gotta have the price or the means to pay the price. Yeah. But notice the second one, which is most important. This, of course, is this, of course, is uh, illustrated us in the shadows and type of Boaz and Ruth. Right. In other words, you gotta have the ability to 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 to, to redeem the person, but then you gotta be willing <laughs> to redeem the person. And then there's got to be, then there can't be nobody else around who is willing to redeem the person. Mm -hmm. do, do you see how special you are? Mm -hmm. That God said that I have this group of, of people here and I am going to redeem them through the blood. Notice what Peter says, what? We were not redeemed by the whole head. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff. Yeah. It, you know that that wasn't what we wouldn't. Mean, those kinds of things could could couldn't couldn't we? They, they, they couldn't pay the price. Right. But we were redeemed by the precious blood. They were not sufficient of the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. Love the love of God. When you came to the table with those things, they were rejected. Exactly right. Yeah. And the it was the thing they wanted was the blood of Christ. That know, was I'm the only not, payment. I'm not letting yeah. you go. That's right. That was the only payment right. that was, here, here's the word, the only payment that was efficacious. Mm. Not efficient. And you need to understand that now. Effic efficient is not the same as efficacious. Okay. Efficient means that, that well, if, if, if I got a car and it's got an engine, it's efficient to get me from point A to point B. But it's not efficacious. Why? Because it it, 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 it it needs gas now, and it's got to be in good mechanical condition now in order to do what? In order to achieve my desired purpose. And that is to get me from point A to point B. The blood of Christ was efficacious in that sense. Not just efficient. Yeah, I get you. It's, it's sufficient to have you worrying, am I going to make it? <laughs> is the car going to die on me before I get there? Exactly right. Uh, well, will the engine hold up? <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I hope. I'm, I'm hoping it'll hold up. But I ain't sure. I'm on needless and pin <laughs> every block I drive. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. And, and then, of course, ultimately speaking, as we get ready to close, uh, it is the love of God that that uh, whereby uh, we, are, we were able to, uh, whenever it was, for me, it was a Thursday when I was when I was born again. But whatever that day is for you, it was the love of God that uh, that that made the rebirth necessary. That's love. Yeah. Well, I think I think they have a song. Not a song. But 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 again, the it is the love of God. In other words, the chest. Huh? So what now? That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's love. I mean, you can't you can't describe it. You can't understand it. But it is the love of God. As a matter of fact, uh, one person would say that if you could understand the love of God, you would fully understand Him. <laughs> but because God is infinite. All that he is, all of his attributes are what? Likewise infinite. 
So if we who are finite beings with a finite mind and understanding, how would we ever expect to understand, fully understand anything about who God is? Exactly right. Well, mercy. That, that, that's the that's $64,000 question. Okay. You guess we'll give $64,000? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But well, most of us don't have $64,000 again. <laughs> okay, so. I'm going out there, y'all. Right. That's the number. That's the right. Number. Yeah. But that's the point. The that's point is what? The point is is that is that we use these unrealistic numbers to, to, to emphasize yeah. our finiteness. Right. Oh, boy. Okay. We always talk about love. We always talk about love. All righty, any questions? As I said before, you're